Tom Ricketts and the team he's assembled have a long-term plan to create a championship team. But first, they must maximize their short-term profits while wading through the troubled waters of media and fan criticism, Chicago politics, and the recreation of one of the most beloved cathedrals of baseball, the iconic Wrigley Field. How important is the renovation of Wrigley Field and the nearby area of Wrigley Field to getting the Cubs to where you want to take them on the field as a championship caliber team? It's really important for a couple different reasons. I mean, um, when you talk about uh, what you can do as an owner to help the club win, doing everything you can to generate extra revenues. To, because those revenues, you, you bring in your dollars, you pay your expenses, and, and the balance of those, the balance of your money goes over to the baseball team to, to get better. Um, it's very important that we, uh, that we do more for the ballpark to raise those revenues, and that'll be an important part of our uh, financial strength in the future. And what do you think this total renovation is going to cost? And there's kind of two components. The park itself is north of $350 million, probably closer to $375 million. And half of that is just steel, concrete, electrical, plumbing. The things that we need to do to save a 100-year-old ballpark uh, for the next 50 years. The other half will be for, for amenities and doing things for fans that, um, that where we've fallen short or, or where other stadiums offer more and are, we'll, we'll catch up with what we do for, for, the, for people coming to the game. The, uh, the other half of the equation is, you know, 150 potentially 200 for outside the park, and that's to, to, develop, the, to develop the plaza and the hotel. So it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty big economic undertaking. How much in additional revenue uh, do you think the renovated ballpark can supply the Cubs? You're talking 30 to $40 million. And, um, and, and if you look at baseball, the way baseball teams uh, do their finances, you basically you pay all your fixed expenses, you know, pay all your staff and salaries and, and everything else that you know that you have to pay every year cover all your cost of you know the maintenance upkeep capex all that stuff and everything that's left goes to baseball so to the extent that we have 30 or 40 million dollars of incremental revenue that can come out of this project that that goes to baseball one of the uh things you've been hammered at uh in the press by some uh reporters is that Rev, uh, what you've spent on player payrolls has gone down a little bit the last few years. But if you look at next year, 2015, there are only two teams with lower guaranteed contracts for their, all their player roster, uh, Pittsburgh and Miami. With the potential renovation, and then you also have a couple of TV deals that are up for renewal over the next several years, you're actually in a great position to build the team from the bottom up. What we realized a few years ago was that um, the way that we were going about trying to win on the field, um, you know, it, it wasn't going to work for the long term. You know, we were spending a very high percentage of our total baseball budget on Major League payroll and, and not spending as much on bringing the right players in. And so what that did for us was, while there were some good seasons in the previous decade, we didn't really have a lot to work with when we purchased the team, so we knew we had to rebuild the, the, the baseball organization. With respect to the, the, the finances, we are going to have a lot of flexibility going forward. When you think about a, a system, that, which is now ranked second or third by most of the major, major third-party sources in baseball, a strong system and financial flexibility on top of it, it should lead us to um, have the ability to create great teams. Yeah, Baseball America... Uh, in listing prospects has the Cubs as the only National League team with two players in the top ten. So that flexibility, it seemed, would be uh, uh, very valuable. And, and it's something you understand well that maybe not every fan understands. That's really critical. You have to have that core of players that are under control for those first six years that they're in the major leagues. You have to have enough of those guys so that you can have the resources to add a, add a free agent or or add someone from the outside. And um, if you don't have that kind of internally generated core, it's very, very difficult to put a consistent winner on the field. As someone who had been a lifelong diehard Cubs fan, how important was the fact that the Cubs haven't won the World Series since 1908 in your decision to buy the team? Uh, it, it's, it's a big part of it. Um, the fact is, 
that the Cubs' quest for a World Series is the greatest mission in all of sport. And to be even a little part of that when we deliver that World Series title to Cubs fans um, will be incredible.